Chào cả nhà, tôi nhớ lần đầu tiên tôi nghe nói về ngôn ngữ có thanh điệu. Tôi đã rất ngạc nhiên vì không thể tưởng tượng nổi sao người ta có thể bày tỏ cảm xúc của mình khi phải dùng cả thanh điệu nữa. Do tiếng mẹ đẻ của tôi không có th- uh, thanh điệu, nên tôi quen việc dùng tôn dạo để thể hiện sự tức giận, sự bình tĩnh, sự vui vẻ, vân vân. Nhưng nếu phải kiểm soát tôn dạo thì tôi làm sao có thể thể hiện cảm xúc đấy? Bất kỳ ai đã học tiếng Việt lâu rồi đều biết tầm quan trọng của việc phát âm thanh điệu rõ và chính xác. Nhưng thanh điệu và bày tỏ cảm xúc không phải là loại trừ lẫn nhau đâu. Chỉ cần đi bộ trên đường phố Việt Nam, nghe mọi người nói chuyện, bạn sẽ lập tức nhận ra liệu họ đang chán, đang vui, đang giận, vân vân. Nhưng làm sao để thể hiện cảm xúc của mình trong khi phát âm rõ? Trong video này, John sẽ chỉ ra một số chiến lược John thấy hiệu quả nhất để làm điều đó. One of the most common questions I hear from people who've just been introduced to the concept of tones is, do I have to sound like a robot? And that's actually quite a reasonable question because how are you supposed to leave room for expressing yourself with your tone of voice if you constantly have to follow the tones? And the answer to that question is no, but also yes. What? Let let me explain. You may have noticed that Vietnamese people have absolutely no issue expressing themselves uh, using their tone of voice. In fact, if you ask a Vietnamese person how they do it, they'll just look at you and just say, I don't know, we just do it. Just do it, man. You've also probably noticed that the way Vietnamese people talk to each other is completely different to what you've been taught in class. So you were probably taught to say, Xin chào, bạn có muốn đi ăn không? Whereas Vietnamese people are just like, Down. <laughs> the thing is, while Vietnamese people don't have to speak like robots, you do. There is a way to express yourself using your tone of voice, but it's hard. Vietnamese people have absolutely no issue doing it naturally, but that's because it's their native language. If you're a beginner, if you've just started learning, what you need to be focusing on is just pronunciation. You need to speak like a robot. You don't get to say, Đi ăn không. You have to say, Đi ăn không. Once you can do that, then you can start thinking about how to use your tone of voice to express yourself. But I reiterate, before you get to that point, before you can speak perfectly like a robot, you should only be focusing on pronunciation. Okay, suppose you can already do this. You can already say every tone perfectly in isolation like a robot. What comes next? How do you de-robotify yourself? Well, it's complicated and there's no clear answer. It really depends on where you are, who you're talking to, maybe like how old the person you're talking to is. There are no hard and fast rules here. But what I would say the general trend is that you need to speak Uh, you need to understand the way that each tone varies with emotion. So let me phrase this another way. You've got different types of zhou huyen depending on how you want to express yourself. You've got a happy zhou huyen. Nhìn rồi. And you've got a sad zhou huyen. Cầm rồi. And you've got an angry zhou huyen. Làm rồi. The same goes for all the other tones apart from zhou ngã, which I'm pretty sure just has no variation at all. Nga is just always nga. So you're going to have to learn each of the different ways to vary each of the individual tones. So let's have a look at what those variations actually are. So you were probably taught that khom zo, the flat tone or alternatively the no tone, is a completely flat note like you're singing. Like ngang, khom. And well that's True, it's also kind of wrong. Definitely it can be pronounced like that, but there's a whole lot of variation, all the way from a completely flat hum to a rapidly descending em ơi. Generally, the most important part of your hum zo isn't keeping it flat, it's actually starting at a very high pitch. So that's why both hum and hum are completely valid ways to express that tone, though there's a lot of variation inside it. And we can exploit that to express different sort of emotional qualities. Like listen to the difference between Tôi không biết đâu 
versus they không biết đâu. Right? Even though I'm still using the same tone, just varying it between the flat versus the rapidly descending allows me to express myself more clearly. I've already talked about Zohuyan a little bit earlier. I think it's this incredibly expressive tone because there's so many different variations you can use to express different things. I actually first noticed the way Vietnamese people vary their voice in order to express emotion when I saw a woman shout at her friend, em biết rồi ma, with all of these lovely little wobbly fluctuations at the end, which was of course completely different to what I was taught in class, just ma. You know, so there's so many different ways we can change it. The neutral ma, the neutral huyen is fine. It's just not very expressive, but it's useful in sentences when we don't need to stress or emphasize that particular word. So for example, in the sentence, you don't need to stress the word t. You can just leave it like that. You've got no reason to add any more emphasis to it. But if we want to sound more emphatic or more angry, that's when we start really stretching it out. So instead of saying uh, ma, we say ma, ma. There's so many different ways of doing that depending on how we feel. So if you've already watched my video about how there are eight tones, you probably already know that there are two different versions of Zosak depending on whether your word ends in a C, T, CH, or P versus anything else. And that's what I call the hard Zosak, and that just goes up, it's like Sak, Hit, something like that. And I find there's not too many ways to vary that particular tone. Um, you know, you could say Không thích, versus không thích, but the, the difference is pretty small. It's just a difference between like pitch and volume maybe. It's like not that much. Versus the soft, so sac, so that's a sac in words like muon. There's a little bit more room for variation in there. So you can hear the difference between say like không muon versus không muon. It really depends I think on where you start the tone. So you can sound a little bit more excited, a little bit more happy if you start at a higher pitch. So that's like the không muốn, không muốn. Whereas if you want to sound more emphatic, more strong, more angry, không muốn. So that's the main way I would suggest varying that. Zonan, both the hard version and the soft version are pretty short tones, which means we don't have too much room for variation within them. The main variation, which comes in the soft na, is comes from whether or not we choose to release air at the end of a word. So normally when you're speaking casually, you don't. You just end it with the glottal stop. So for example, that's just na. But if you want to add more emphasis, if you want to really make it a strong, emphatic word, then you kind of re-release the air and pronounce the ending sound again after the glottal stop. So that's the difference between na and na. Right or lang and lang, you'll notice Vietnamese people do that ending sound if they really want to enunciate clearly or add extra stress to that word. As far as I'm aware, there's no particularly friendly way to say a zonat word because it's, I know, frankly, a pretty aggressive sound. Nam, um, but you can probably just say it a little bit more quietly, I guess, if you want to sound less aggressive when you say it. Nam, nam. So zo hai is probably my favorite tone just because it leaves so much room for creativity. If you've seen my other video about like all the different ways to pronounce zo hai, you would know it's just full of variations. So the most neutral one, where you start high and end low and don't go up again, that's great if you want to sound just kind of neutral and balanced, like không phải. But if you want to add like a much more intense sort of rejection, it could be more like không phải, where you really draw out the ending there. You're more không phải. You can really stretch it out, pull it high, and add that rising ending to make it sound more intense, I suppose. If you want to go the other way and sound more calm and relaxed, you make it a lower tone and you don't do any rising at all. So that would be không phải, không phải. So you can hear the difference there in how I'm saying the phrase không phải. You've got không phải, không phải, and không phải. So lastly, we're at zong ngã, which in my opinion is the least flexible and most rigid of all of the tones. There doesn't really seem to be any way we can 
change it significantly. Nga, like I said, is just nga. You can probably change the pitch and volume a little bit. So that would be the difference between nga versus nga. Or maybe you could emphasize the very start of the word. So it would be the difference between em khombiet ve versus em khombiet ve. So there is a way to change it, but it's more just about pitch and volume. So that's like a brief overview of what I would consider to be the main ways you can vary your tones to express emotion. Of course, it goes much, much, much deeper than this. This is just skimming the surface. And the only real way to learn is to just watch Vietnamese people speak in action. And by that, I mean actually listen to them speak to each other, not when they speak to you. Because you'll notice that when they speak to you, they really simplify and try to sound as formal as possible, which is very kind of them because you know, they want you to understand, but it's also not quite the same thing as naturally spoken Vietnamese. So that's the main thing. Just listen to people, speak to each other, notice all of those variations, and maybe try to copy it yourself. That said, that's not the only way to express emotions in Vietnamese. Varying your intonation is part of it. The other really important thing to learn is how to use sentence final particles properly. So that's words like nhe and ha and a. And if you can use those, if you can learn to incorporate those into your daily speech, you're going to sound much more natural and much more emphatic. But that's a topic for another video. We'll do a part two sometime soon. In the meantime, please subscribe to Thing Viet Oi, like, leave a comment, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time.